Hey everyone, uh, this is Mwes Gwambwa Bosco, the Teacher Wisdom Center, uh, that is Bugesera in Karumuna. Yes, as usual, I'm your science teacher. Uh, I can actually, I'm again back that we go through, uh, yes, uh, our activities as usual. So last time uh, we looked at, uh, yes, different uh, components of uh, the system of blood circulation with the major organs, okay? Yes, so we handled that, the, the, the heart, the blood vessels, okay? And then now, for this time, we want to look at the blood, okay? As the last organ, major organ of any system of blood circulation, majorly. So uh, for this time, yes, we want to look at that majorly, uh, blood, but majorly, but before you go to that, uh, you may need, a, let's say, any time, you may have any query to ask, ask. So always check here. When you have anything to ask, to inquire, uh, check our contacts, you can easily get us in time, they are available, yeah, and then uh, still you can also drop to the email, we can get you to the school website, yes, so you can be helped at any time, please, where you are in the whole country, you don't have any, don't have any prob pro have no problem in this work, any time you want help, please, yes, check on that. Uh, so, as I said earlier, today we want to handle specifically, yes, blood, looking at blood, uh, the types of blood, the blood components, yes. So, uh, let us move forward to our today's part. So, specifically looking at blood, yes, uh, from the last, first part, last time, you see, we uh, talked about blood, and we say that simply blood can be yeah, the red li liquid found in the body. That can actually be a simple understanding of blood, but still uh, we can also say blood uh, is a liquid that flows continuously in the body. You find that, that it's, it, yes, it has, shall we look at a different components of blood. You can find, you'll talk, we shall talk of many of them, the white blood cells, red blood cells, and so on, name it. Then, uh, but for now, let us first move straight, yes, the types of blood, uh, okay? But before, uh, yes, for this, to get this, majorly we say, when the blood becomes, uh, okay, becomes, right, becomes bright red, that simply becomes oxygenated, okay? Uh, and then, yes, when it becomes dark red, it becomes deoxygenated. So this drives us to the types of blood, okay? So yes, so you can be asked, what are the types of blood? As simple as that. So uh, from uh, this ground that when the blood, yes, becomes bright red, it is simply oxygenated, okay? So this gives a type of blood as oxygenated blood, as simple as that. Then uh, when the blood, we say that, that when it becomes dark red, this becomes, and that means it actually most times find that it has no oxygen, it's, it's containing carbon dioxide. It, is, it becomes deoxygenated. So this simply gives us the type as the oxygenated blood. So coming down here, yes, we look at the two types of blood. So you can be asked in exams, mention the two types of blood, as simple as that. So the types of blood we have, simply we have uh, the first type as oxygenated blood. And when you look at, uh, they can simply ask you, write short notes on uh, blood without oh, blood, uh, this type of blood. You can simply say that, uh, Oxygenated blood is simply blood uh, with oxygen or blood containing oxygen, as simple as that. Remember, we said that blood from lungs, okay, blood when it gets into the lungs, blood, blood gets into the lungs, okay, uh, it gets oxygen, it becomes oxygenated and then drops carbon dioxide. So this blood flows back, okay, to the heart so that it can be pumped all body parts along uh, the, the vessel called the uh, blood vessel called iota. So this is simply called oxygenated blood. It's a type of blood uh, with oxygen or that contains oxygen. Then the other part will be the next type of blood, with the blood without oxygen. This blood majorly is uh, dark red in color. So this is simply refers as the oxygenated blood. This is a type of blood that uh, has no oxygen, or can some, one can say it's a type of blood without oxygen, as simple as that. Yes, so this uh, gives us a, a way more, so as the difference, you can also say, yes, uh, the blood uh, is bright red in the color, okay, uh, well, uh, the oxygenated blood is dark red in the color, yes, it's dark red. It's just, uh, that can be also a difference, but remember, 
oxygenated as from the word it has oxygen and then it deoxygenated it has no oxygen so as simple as that we can just get a clear view of the types of blood uh, so as we move on yes you can be asked about uh, the blood groups so yes blood also can be put uh, in a can be classified into two actually uh, four major groups but we can also have eight from the four so at uh, the four major groups of blood we can group as blood group o okay uh, which this is the universal donor majorly you find that it can easily donate somebody with blood group o find can easily give or donate to any oh these are the components okay and as we move on you have uh, blood group a uh, yes there is blood group uh, b and then there's a blood group ab okay so these are the principal or the major uh, blood groups but when you want to get other four to make eight like you learned about uh, integers okay when a number has nothing we can say it is a positive so uh, we can uh, so this can be maybe let's say o plus when you want to get another one you can say a uh, blood group o minus that can be the second group so this is blood group a so you can it can be a plus because when there is not nothing like a sign, that means it is positive. So can it be blood, blood group, okay? Or is blood group A plus, and then one comes to say another blood group A minus. So it becomes another component. Here also blood group B, you can say blood group P, blood group B plus, and then blood group B uh, minus, okay? Oh, and then coming to this part here, yes, to have another blood group, we can also get two from here. We can say, instead of saying blood group AB, you can say blood group AB plus, okay? Or one can say, for the second, you can say blood group AB minus. So you can find, once you put, you say blood group O plus, that's one blood group. You can also say blood group O minus, that becomes two blood groups. So from this, we can get uh, four blood groups, but just by just uh, using plus O minus. So, uh, these ones, simply, yes, uh, they are the four major uh, blood groups. So you need to look at each here. We need to see which is a universal recipient, which is a universal donor. This is very important to check on this. Uh, yes, uh, like for example, somebody has blood, has blood group A, okay? Can he give A or gives B? Yes, so these are all questions which we can ask each other. So we want to have this as an individual activity. Check which of these are okay is a universal donor. If we say universal donor, it means it can this group can give blood to all other blood, other blood groups. For example, blood group O. O, yes, can't receive from N, can't get A from A, cannot get from B, can't get from A B, but can give all other groups, can give B, can give A, can give A B. So it's a universal uh, uh, donor, donating, giving. Then uh, when we uh, check other blood groups, okay, you'll find that uh, if we, one can be one is called a universal recipient, means you'd receive blood from all other blood groups. Okay, yes. So from here, yes, you want, want us to have actually time, uh, think of this, say, which of, the, which of the following is a universal recipient? Okay, you can uh, use uh, Google search. Okay, you will learn, learn about uh, search engines in ICT. It's just a very, very common, yes, uh, search engine, Google search. So check, try to check about, uh, yes, check about blood group A, about blood group B, check about blood group AB. Which of these is a universal, universal recipient? Oh, yes, yes, uh, so which can A give B, can B give A, so check all those things. This is going to be done uh, in an individual activity. So look at this, and then, uh, yes, we shall again get together and look at more of this. So like here, you asked individual activity from this, okay? Uh, why is blood group or called a universal donor? Yes, so check. Why do you think, oh, uh -huh, is called a universal donor? Then uh, check uh, which of the above is a universal recipient. So check of this, okay? Which of the above, blood group O, blood group A, blood group B, and AB, which blood group can receive from all, okay, the blood groups that will be referred to a universal recipient. Uh, and then uh, when you get to number three, 
also this is all in the video activity to look at this uh, yes it says uh, Ishime went to the doctor to the doctor for blood group test uh, it was found that his blood group was O. So we are asked, which blood group can Ishimwe donate to? So Ishimwe being uh, that uh, he has got a blood group O, okay, from a group, from blood group test from the doctor, okay, results show that he has got blood group O. Yes, so if he has blood group O, what do you think? Which uh, blood groups, okay, uh, which blood group can Ishimwe donate to? So you can list them down. Uh, and then also ask yourself, in case somebody has, let's say, blood group, uh, yes, B, yes, to which blood group can he donate to or receive from? So check on donating and then receiving. Check on those, those in, your in your activity as an individual activity. So please remember, do this individual activity to help you. Yes, check on these four blood groups. Which we are, we are saying why is blood group O called a universal donor? Why can't donate to other groups? Then which of the above is a universal recipient? Uh, so look at that and then also this number. Yes, so this is going to help us to uh, have actually clear understanding about uh, the blood groups. Okay, uh, so then uh, uh, when we move ahead, we go to the blood components. So you can call them components or composition of blood. So uh, this is a very common question about uh, blood components. So they can ask you, yes, what are the four uh, co blood, common blood components? So the blood components are majorly commonly they have, actually four. Look at this, we have uh, the, white, the white blood cells. Uh, these are also called leukocytes. So you can be asked, what name is given to the white blood cells? We simply say leukocytes. Yes. And then uh, when you go to the second uh, blood group, it's uh, simply the red blood cells. So, so the blood, the, the blood component, not a group, blood component. It's, uh, yes, it, has, it is also given another name, which is simply called uh, the erythrocytes. So when you asked what other name is given the red blood cells, simply say erythrocytes. Then uh, uh, the third blood, actually, uh, component, it is uh, the platelets or blood platelets. Yes, these are simply referred to as thrombocytes. So you can be asked in exams, which other group, which other name can be given uh, to the blood platelets? The, the, you can simply say the thrombocytes. Okay, then plasma, this is the fourth part, the fourth uh, component of blood. This is your, you can also simply say it's a, a fluid of blood. What is a fluid of blood? It's a liquid. So majorly plasma is the liquid part of blood. Yes, uh, if you check, it's, it's just a fluid. So uh, looking at this, to understand the simple about the components, components mean things that make up something. So uh, blood is majorly made up of four components, which are the white blood cells, simply the leukocytes, Red blood cells, which are the erythrocytes, and then the platelets, which are the thrombocytes, and lastly, blood plasma, which is a, a, a blood a fluid or liquid, part of blood. So uh, these are the four components of blood. We want to go ahead and look at each, okay? The function, uh, it is very important, okay? Because it is very good to be aware of the, the blood components. Uh, so look at, look at this, have a note, as we move ahead. Remember, at least, okay, or on average, you find that uh, another person is in the range of uh, five to six liters of blood. They can ask you, how actually, what's the quantity or the capacity, let's say the capacity of blood in liters, majorly it is five to six liters of blood uh, in, a, a, in a human body of an adult person. So meaning below this, that can be, uh, actually one lack of blood or, la uh, or lack of blood which is simply uh, referred to anemia, lack of iron in the body. So when one is like uh, one, let's say two liters, three is not is less. So majorly uh, the minimum number or let's say the, so the, the average number of, of liters or average quantity, it is uh, uh, five to six liters. That's the capacity of blood specifically uh, for an adult person. Meaning for young can even below that. 
So, but for adult persons, specifically at least, there uh, should be five to six liters of blood. That's on average. So uh, then looking at uh, the components of blood, we talked of red blood cells. Yes, so this, these are blood cells, or these blood components are made of circular disc shapes, okay, and oxygen. That's why we simply talk of red blood cells. So they also contain oxygen, and uh, it's uh, majorly bright red in color, okay? So uh, they are made in a red bone marrow of short bones. So you can be asked, where are red blood cells manufactured? Okay? Simply say they are made in a red bone marrow of short bones. Okay? Talk of the ribs. Uh, yes, that's an example of those bones. Uh, and then uh, uh, they are red due to the existence of the hemoglobin. Yeah, so bread, this bread, blood is red in color because it contains uh, hemoglobin. This is the red pigment in the blood. Uh, then we are saying oh, when hemoglobin combines with oxygen, it simply forms a, a substance called oxyhemoglobin, okay? Uh, blood, which is reddish bright in color. Uh, this is still we find uh, done within the lungs. When the blood goes to lungs, we find that uh, gets oxygen mixed with uh, the red pigment, which is the hemoglobin, then uh, it forms oxyhemoglobin. This is all transported back to the heart and sent to all other parts of the body. Uh, yes, so looking at a diagram of red blood cells, you can see here, we see that they are of disc-like shape. You see? They are like discs, not properly circular, but called, we find it to disc-like shapes. If you, ch you check on these cells, these cells have no nucleus, which is a, a distinguishing feature uh, from the white blood cells, we shall see them having the control part, having the nucleus. So as we move on, okay, we can then check, uh, looking at the main function. So the main function of red blood cells is to carry oxygen around, around the body. So we'll be asked, what is the function of red blood cells? Simply said to carry oxygen, okay? As simple as that. Red blood cells carry oxygen uh, around the body. And this is very common. You can ask the given this different format, what he always remember. Uh, red blood cells carry oxygen. Uh, Cookie can have a note here. Talk about uh, within the, for red blood cells, we can look at uh, some parasites that can attack red blood cells. So majorly plasmodia parasites attack red blood cells. Okay. Uh, yes, so these ones, when you attack red blood cells, you can find that at the end they cause malaria to people. You can simply uh, see this. That's why majorly you find somebody that has got malaria also find this effect of or reduced number of red blood cells because plasmodia will attack or affect red blood cells uh, causing or leading to malaria. Uh, and then, uh, yes, we're going to number two, we look at the white blood cells which are simply referred to as the leukocytes. So white blood cells have a nucleus, okay? But with no hemoglobin, okay, in their cytoplasm, which is different from the white blood, red blood cells. That's why you can see that red blood cells are red in color, but for white blood cells are colorless, have no color, because they do not have the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a red pigment that gives blood its color. So when you see blood, like when you go to white blood cells, it's like cars. You can say it's, you can't say red or what, okay? Because it lacks hemoglobin that gives blood uh, its color. Yes, so the nucleus uh, majorly controls the cell activities, okay? Uh, for the cell to engulf the disease germs, majorly you find that by the help of the nucleus. Yes, so let's just look at the structure of the, of the white blood cells. You can see. Uh, it has uh, majorly got the cell wall, uh, the nucleus. This is the nucleus, the inner part. You can see this. And then uh, it has got uh, this cytoplasm, shown by these small drops that are showing cytoplasm. So majorly, when you look at the nucleus, this is the control part of the cell. So this helps the cell to move, okay, to engulf these germs. Majorly, that's why you find that these bad cells they fight against disease germs. So they are like the soldiers of, 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 of the body. They defend the body against disease germs. Uh, you can see also another shape. Uh, okay. 
You see? So these blood cells, they can form any shape when they're attacking the enemy. Let's say they want to, uh, if the body is affected by, or attacked by uh, different uh, germs, okay, disease germs, so they easily, these white blood cells, easily go there to attack, okay? So majorly, when these ones are weakened, that's when the body becomes uh, inefficient, okay, to fight against these germs. Uh, and then we can uh, still move on, okay? Yes, so looking at this, we say that uh, for the white blood cells, they fight against these germs or these causing germs, okay? So, uh, Major, they can ask you, what's the function of white blood cells? Simply say, they fight against diseases. So then, moving to the next part, we say the white blood cells have an irregular shape to enable them to engulf the germs. So looking at the shape, the white blood cells, okay, they have disc-like shapes. Then for, red blood, for white blood cells, for them they are shapeless. They have irregular shapes, which is different from the, uh, white, the red blood cells, which have disc-like shapes. So you can be asked to give the difference between white blood cells and red blood cells. So talking about the shapes, you can say white blood cells have irregular shapes, okay, or have, we simply say have no specific shape. Then for these of white red blood cells have disc like shapes. So this shape of uh, red, red blood cells change as they move, okay, to attack uh, the, the, the disease causing germs. So uh, looking at a note, we say the white blood cells are attacked and destroyed by human immunodeficiency virus, okay, which is simply HIV. So they can ask you, uh, which virus attacks and destroys the white blood cells. This is the HIV, or the human immunodeficiency virus. And then we can say, yes, two, uh, two main white blood cells in the body, okay, we find that uh, may cause a disease called leukemia. Yes, uh, we shall look at this one uh, as we move on, okay? You'll find that uh, uh, this, this condition, you can find that uh, there are kind of abnormal kind of cells in the body. Yes, so we shall look at this as we move on. Uh, so we are asked to give a difference between uh, red blood cells and white blood cells, okay? Simply look at the differences. Uh, look at the size, okay? Uh, the, the, so, so the, the shapes, okay? Uh, which of them are more in the number? Look at the white, white blood cells, okay? Compare white blood cells. Which of them are more or are larger in the number? That can be a difference. And then uh, I check, look at the shapes. You can find that uh, one is regular and one is irregular. So you can ask yourself which is regular and then which, is, which has irregular, which has regular shapes. So this number, I uh, request to do it and complete this. We can have more ideas still. Uh, check on the nucleus. One blood cell, some blood cells have nucleus and have no, have no nucleus. So which blood cells have a nucleus and then should have no nucleus? So that becomes a difference, okay? Then uh, uh, still another difference, uh, you can move ahead, yes, and check on the color. Which of them are, are red in color that have, have half hemoglobin? And then which of them are colors that have no color? So that's also another kind of difference. So please uh, remember we want to do this work together as a discussion that helps you to do actually on yourself also. So please uh, do this number from those ideas. You can develop at least uh, four differences between the red blood cells and the white blood cells. Yes, uh, so moving the next component will be the blood plasma. So our blood plasma simply, uh, we can say that uh, this is the liquid part of blood, as simple as that. Or one can say is the watery part of blood, okay? Yes, it is pale in color, if you check. Uh, we can now uh, look at, uh, if you look at, uh, yes, structure. Yes, but remember, we always ask, yes, about blood plasma. So blood plasma is simply, it's talk about it's a liquid part of blood, as simple as that. And the find that uh, this blood does more of transportation. It has got a lot of functions. So we can look at the roles of blood plasma. Uh, blood plasma transports carbon dioxide from all body parts, okay, the lungs. So, or somebody can simply, yes, say that, uh, yes, uh, can transfer waste products. It's also very important because carbon dioxide is a waste product. 
Then the blood, tra blood plasma transports digested food to all parts of the body. Uh, this is also very good Not, And then uh, still plasma transport hormones from the glands to where uh, they are needed. So if you check, you find that because this, blood, this part of blood is the liquid part of blood, does move the transportation of the materials within the uh, uh, blood, uh, the blood materials, like carbon dioxide, okay? Uh, talk of the food nutrients, talk of the hormones, yes, but not oxygen. For oxygen is transported by red blood cells. Yes, so uh, we can move to the next blood component, which is the third part, which is the blood platelets or the thrombocytes. So uh, the blood platelets majorly are uh, the hope actually in the blood clotting. When you cut yourself, they're the ones which first have to go there to, uh, to cause clotting, clotting, to prevent hemorrhage or excessive or severe flow of blood. Yes, uh, or severe bleeding. So our blood platelets are also made in the red bone marrow, simply just like uh, the red blood cells. Yes, you find that uh, they help to reduce uh, over bleeding by clotting around the wound. This is what we say that uh, once you, let's say you cut yourself or oh, this wound uh, or oh, you are bleeding, majorly uh, these platelets are the ones which are uh, move, which are sent. They easily move for the body to send them for the stem to go to their part, the affected part, to cause clotting of blood that will prevent hemorrhage, uh, which means severe bleeding. So uh, they are, we can say there are very many in the body with no nucleus, okay? and live shortly for this. So checking uh, on the blood platelets, we can simply, uh, yes, see the structure. You can see, yeah, they are of just of a small size, very tiny blood cells, but very many, okay, in the body. Uh, so uh, not, we can look at this note here, we say, shortage of blood platelets result into uncontrolled bleeding in case of a wound, uh, which we can simply refer to severe bleeding, okay? And this is also uh, refers to as hemorrhage, whereby, yes, may, may cut off or let's say bleed and bleed continuously. This is hemorrhage or severe bleeding. So uh, the platelets control this. They prevent severe bleeding or uncontrolled bleeding. Uh, so this brings us to functions of blood. Blood actually has a very important part. You find that there are very many functions. Talk about uh, uh, let's say we say carries oxygen uh, from lungs to all other parts. Uh, yes, blood seals wounds with the help of blood platelets, which help uh, in blood clotting. Then, uh, uh, yes, blood still uh, help to keep the body warm because it transports heat around the body. Yeah, blood uh, carries carbon dioxide from all body parts, okay, to other parts for excretion. So uh, this is also another important part. Okay, then uh, blood carries digestive food, yes, uh, from the ileum or from the small intestine where the chain takes end to different body parts, yes, uh, for body growth. And then uh, blood uh, carries white blood cells to areas of infection because remember white blood cells, uh, they fight against diseases. So uh, they are transported by blood uh, to different uh, parts where there's infection. Yeah, so having looked at different uh, components of blood. We find that uh, uh, we have looked at a couple of them, uh, like uh, coming to uh, the, the red, uh, red blood cells, uh, the white blood cells, uh, the blood platelets, plasma. So these are all components of blood. So majorly, uh, there are four components of blood. Uh, these blood components, each has got a function. So you need to be uh, careful with this. You can be asked, Yes, what are the functions of the following blood components? Uh, so talk about red blood cells. We simply say that uh, red blood cells carry oxygen. So as simple as that, majorly, let's say, yeah, from the lungs to the heart, let's say, transporting it to different all parts of the body. And then uh, when you come to white blood cells, which are simply called the, the leukocytes, white blood cells uh, simply fight against diseases. Yes, that's a very clear a view on uh, the white blood cells. When you come to the blood platelets, simply we say that our blood platelets majorly uh, they help in clotting of blood, preventing uh, severe bleeding or hemorrhage. We shall look at more, look at hemorrhage, majorly, yes, this kind of severe bleeding, uncontrolled bleeding. 
So this can be stopped or reduced by uh, actually having uh, healthy blood platelets. And then uh, when you look, lastly you come to blood plasma, has got a lot of functions, okay? And remember we said this is uh, majorly the liquid part of blood. So blood plasma can help in transporting uh, uh, waste products like carbon dioxide, transporting food nutrients, yes, transporting hormones. So you can see blood plasma has a number of functions. So they can ask you, Yes, mention the components of blood plasma. Still, yeah, they can talk of uh, mineral salts or salts, talk of hormones, yes, yes, water. Uh, these are all components of blood plasma. So, uh, yes, so this brings us to actually uh, the end of our lesson, and we have got to look at uh, different activities which I have to leave with you uh, to keep doing. So, please uh, look at this activity uh, you're given. So this is uh, it's going to be individual activity. Looking at number one, where you look at uh, you given, yes, you asked, how useful are the following components of blood in the body? Yeah, we have discussed about this, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and blood plasma. So yes, you can simply, yes, from, from the discussion you've got, you can check uh, on this and complete this number. So this is uh, individual work, uh, you need to, Yes, to keep doing. Uh, number two, still, yes, you asked what makes up this circulatory system. Yeah, we've been doing that. Is we talked of uh, the, the the three major organs. Talk of the blood vessels. The talk of the blood vessels, uh, the blood and the and the heart. So that can uh, actually help us to uh, the, the form the system of blood circulation. Then uh, uh, when we come to number three, you asked describe the process of blood circulation using a flow diagram. So for this one, you can uh, we looked at a, yes a summary diagram where you look at uh, the big circulation and then small circulation. So this can be very clear diagram yes to to hit up with this number. Then uh, coming to number four, uh, yes you asked yes what's the significance of the organization of the heart in two four chambers and the further left and right sides. We are simply looking at the importance of the chambers of the heart and then uh, the sides left to right. So we said that the heart is divided into two major parts, the right side and then the left side, so we, with the part which is uh, simply the septum. We say that this helps to prevent blood without oxygen, mixing with blood with oxygen, okay? Uh, and then uh, you can still look at that. Go to number five, we are asked, we are asked to complete the table below here. Yes, so this table here, yes, you're given blood vessel and then function. Yeah, we have done this. We looked at, uh, check here, vena cava. This is actually, remember, the major uh, is the main, yes, the main vein in the body. Yes, we're saying carries blood from dash to dash. Yes, uh, so looking at this, we can do this together uh, for air. So remember, the vena cava carries blood from other body parts or from all body parts. Okay, to the heart. Yes, so blood from all other parts of the body coming, okay, yes, uh, to the heart is carried, yes, uh, is carried by vena cava. So we can simply answer this, yes, uh, carries blood from dash to dash. So carries blood from all other parts of the body to the heart. Yeah, look at number B here. Yes, so we are given a uh, pulmonary artery. We asked, carries blood from dash to dash. Yes, since you have answered A together, try B, yeah? So blood, this, the second blood vessel carries blood from where to where, okay? Then uh, part C, look at pulmonary vein, carries blood from dash to dash, so you can answer this. And then lastly, you're given iota. Yes, these are blood, the four blood vessels we looked at uh, for the first time. So uh, we said iota is the, main, is the main artery in the body just like a vena cava being the major vein in the body. So this, yes, carries blood from where? From dash to dash. So you can still also complete this. So this table, uh, you can set from active you have been doing, you can complete this easily. In, yes, so please go through this. Then lastly, yeah, we are given the question here, state any four functions of blood. Yeah, we have gone through a number of blood, okay? Transporting hormones, transporting oxygen. Uh, yes, name it. So, you can try this still and answer 
system, at least for, comp for functions of blood. So uh, you are given an, a number of actually questions to go through. Yes, for your revision. I want to leave them with this time. Keep uh, doing your work, and then uh, we come to the end. Yes, so for this time, uh, we have actually come to the last part of, of, of our, our session today, and uh, you are actually encouraged to go through your activities that I've left with you. This helps you to remember, it keeps you updated, okay? Yeah, so the time you get back to school, uh, they ask you about blood circulation, about your blood vessels, about what, name it, uh, within the human body. You can't fail to answer. So please, always keep up with us. And uh, to do this easily, always watch BTN TV. We'll be getting our lessons. Uh, follow us, uh, okay, uh, on YouTube. Watch YouTube, check on YouTube. We'll be having uh, videos to watch and have all our lessons. Uh, check on our web websites, Wisdom Center website. You can still have the questions for revision and then keep updated. Yes, so this brings us to the end of our lesson and uh, we thank you, yes, for, for your follow-up.